What's up guys, you know who it is, you know what it is, your boy JP the Install Guy, hope to make your install life a little bit easier, and today we have a 2009 GMC Yukon, and I'm going to show you how to actually run some power wires through the firewall, if this is the type of thing that you're into, please consider subscribing, because this is what we do here, car audio tutorials, radio removals, anything car audio install related, that's what this channel is about, and from time to time, I like to spread my car audio knowledge, so, we're get so whether you're a beginner or advanced, this channel just might be for you. As may already know, by this time, we want to make sure that we can find a rubber grommet and the rubber grommet is going to actually be over here let me turn my light on real quick so y'all can see we do have a grommet right here and that's probably going to be the easiest place for us to go in now we are going to have to go across the body and we're probably going to end up putting the amp on this side in the back uh, just so we can save as much wire as possible because we don't want to come from the battery over here down the Yukon and then back over to that side. So we're just gonna cross the engine bay one time, go through here and then go straight to the back. Now, I don't want you guys to think that this is a grommet that you can go through, uh, go through because when we pull that back, it literally only puts you into this part. Like if you needed to replace these right here or get to those motors, you can take that out. And if you stick your uh, power wire through there, you're gonna end up in here. I'm not saying that there's not a way that you can possibly get into the uh, inside Side from there I'm just saying it's not ideal it's gonna cause you way more work before I actually uh, get that power wire through the firewall I want to actually show you where we're going to actually connect it to so I could try to lift this up and bring my power wire through there through here this thing actually pops up but we are running a four gauge wire and it'll be a little too thick for that right there also this little 10 mil bolt right here uh, there's a piece on the left side and the right side when you take that bolt off it's going to actually spread apart and then there's like the at the bottom of that bolt is like a little u-shaped little situation that's actually holding that together you could undo this put your bolt on there and put it back in but I would advise that you actually maybe cut one some of this plastic off that way you can get your power wire in but I don't want to do that if you look over here we actually have a fuse holder and the power wire is running to this fuse holder so that's probably where I'm going to mount it so which side are we going to mount it on well I don't want to mount it on this side because this thing is already rated for 175 amps and if I put my power wire on this side of the fuse then there's going to be more current from the amplifier actually coming through the fuse. What we want to do is power, uh, we want to install our power wire on this side of the fuse because it is going directly to the battery. That way we can come off of the fuse on the top and then I could just zip tie it along here and then we have our fuse block that comes with our amp kit so it can be fused literally straight from the battery to our fuse and not go through this fuse and then into the other fuse. And some may be saying, well, won't that be double protection if it's actually double fused? Uh, not really, because we're going to be pulling the extra 150 amps of current from the amplifier. And this, uh, this fuse right here is only rated for 175. So if we're going to be adding 150 to this. I'm just afraid that if we mount it on this side of the fuse, that we'll automatically, power, we'll automatically pop this fuse. And then everything that this is powering for the rest of the car is going to automatically shut off. So we're going to do it on this side. So this fuse is still staying intact. Now, if you guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my box cutter and just make a small incision on the grommet. I want to make sure I'm more towards the top of this so I don't hit any wires. Your wire is actually down here. Your group of wires that's actually going into the car is right here and it's going straight through the middle. So I want to make sure I come up here at a top angle. And it really could be the top or the sides or whatever, whichever way you want to go. But I do know that the fuse box is directly in front on the inside of this uh, grommet. So I like to come at the top so I can go down at an angle. And then it usually comes right up under the uh, fuse box. Let me show you what that looks like. So here is the, well, it's not the fuse box, but this is where uh, a lot of the group of those wires that's coming in goes into this little thing right here. And the grommet with all the wires you can see is right here in the back if it'll focus so that's where it's going to end up coming out at so the reason being like i said i like to come in at the top and then it usually just shoots straight down So now it is going through. Now let's go on the other side and see where it's coming out at. 
I told y'all every single time. I don't know if I can zoom in. Yep, sure can. Uh, can I focus? So it's literally coming right to the side of those wires right there through the little inside. It may be a little tight. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit, but you don't have to try to make an incision on this side to get it through. You, you don't have to. You can if you think it'll be easier, but in order to get your hand through all of this, a lot of stuff is going to have to come off and I'd rather you just try to poke around till you can get it in. All right, so let's tape our power wire up on the other side and pull that thing straight through. Now this is some four gauge wire that we have going through. See, I got it taped up on my little wire pulling tool right here. But uh, the wire that we're pulling through, like I said, is four gauge. It's a little bit on the thick side. So I want to use this Kent Automotive Spray. It's called Super Slick Dry Lube. This thing will help you get your thick wire through tight spaces. <laughs> All right, either way, let's go ahead and spray. Oh no. There we go, we barely got in. There we go, just spray the whole thing. I like to spray down there. There we go. Oh, we barely got any. There we go, that should be good, that should be good. And one thing I like to do is just run a zip tie right here. I already have my wire ran across that side to where I'm gonna hook it up at, but I like to run this zip tie right here so while I'm pulling, I know I don't actually pull too much of my slack. And I'm gonna pull back just a tab, and that's just in case I may need it. And as you can see, we have our power wire in the car and we are sitting right here. Now, in order to make this look a little bit cleaner, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some black split loom and roll it all the way up to the top. That way, so everything looks black going up there. You can barely see it. We're gonna tuck this on the carpet. I've already taken the panels off and we're just gonna run this down the line straight to the back. All right, so up front in the engine, we have it mounted right there. Zip tied along the factory wiring and it is loom. Loom going all the way into the uh, grommet. All right, so I went ahead and put these panels on because I was running out of time. I just want to show you guys that one part on how to get in the firewall, but I ran the power wire down this way right here. And the power wire and the ground are both coming out of here. Uh, out of this part right here going into the amp. Uh, if the wires gotta be seen, then you gotta make sure that they're gonna be clean. So I just wanna make sure that I cleaned them up. And the reason I like to go ahead and mount the amp not on the box is simply just for the fact that if he needed more cargo space in here, all he has to do is unplug these and we don't have to take the amp off of the box and uninstall the whole thing. He can literally just take this out, put it in, or if he needs to swap subs, just have to take the subs out this box and you don't have to worry about messing with the amp. But we have our speaker wire going down here, going over to there. Uh, RCA and remote wire are coming from the other side, that way so we don't have any noise. Uh, we have our signal and our power coming down separate sides of the car. Now I do have videos showing you guys how to fully install a car audio amplifier to your sub, so I will link all that stuff in the description. That car should be popping up in the corner, so I can make this one short, sweet, straight to the point for you guys for this specific vehicle. And uh, I have some other stuff in the how-to playlist for you guys as well. Till next time, this is your boy JP signing out, man. I hope everybody has a blessed day.